It's Ramsey Dewey. I'm over here in Hainan, China by the South China Sea. Welcome to another edition of, well, it's not Q&A with the coach. It's the Ramsey Dewey Show, I guess, because I'm vlogging about stuff on my mind. Unarmed ritual combat. <laughs> I got a stupid comment the other day, just a really stupid one. Most comments even ones that are not well thought out. I appreciate them, but this one was just stupid. And this fellow insisted that white men, he got really racist, but I'll just paraphrase it. White men never fought without weapons until they started watching Kung Fu movies. And this is a load of crap. Every culture, every human culture on this planet and not just humans, but animals too, many species of animals, engage in ritual unarmed combat. And there are many different forms of ritual unarmed combat. We see it in monitor lizards. We see it in skinks. We see it in bighorn sheep. We see it in bears, rhinos, all kinds of animals they have this form of unarmed ritual combat where the goal is to display dominance for a couple of reasons. Sometimes it's mating rights, sometimes it's territorial rights, sometimes it's simply to establish a social hierarchy. Right? I'm the top lizard and you're not. And human culture is not that different. We engage in unarmed ritual combat for a number of reasons. Sometimes like canines will do this, dogs, wolves, foxes, coyotes. They will engage in ritual combat in order to teach their young survival skills. They play fight with them instead of ripping out the throat. They'll put their jaws on the throat, but they won't tear it. They won't do the real damage. Why? To ensure the survival of the species. And this is something that among an animals is so incredibly natural. Unarmed ritual combat, where you establish this dominance, this hierarchy, and learn fighting skills, survival skills, where the pack grows strong and capable and fluent in the movement vocabulary of combat. as opposed to sitting idly by and becoming a sedentary prey. But many modern humans, we've forgotten about this. And we tend to look at unarmed ritual combat as entertainment, purely. And it is entertainment. Make no mistake about that. Even animals watch the other ones it's fun. It's interesting. But every culture on this planet, every color, every ethnicity, every language, every nation of people, for time immemorial, has engaged in various forms of unarmed ritual combat, usually grappling. Why grappling specifically? Because that is the one where you can fight to the death, but nobody has to die. Where you can go hard, really hard. Go to the breaking point. Truly test yourself. And then walk away mostly uninjured afterward. Where you can fight again another day. While still learning and retaining those valuable lessons. Most of the indigenous martial arts from the nations around the world do not involve closed fist striking for a couple of reasons. There are very, very few. Boxing, which originated from the Greeks. And even then, the original boxing, they would wrap their hands with leather straps. So it wasn't purely unarmed combat. And when the Romans started doing it, they would wear a, a kestis. It was basically brass knuckles a metal gauntlet around their fist. 
So that was armed combat. Boxing itself is an amalgam of fighting with a sword and a shield or a sword and a buckler with the lead hand representing the shield and the back hand representing the sword. But yeah, everybody wrestles in some way or another, whether it's trying to pin the other guy, throw the other guy on his back while one man remains standing, or make the other guy submit and say uncle or tap out, or say, Mate! Blood sport reference right there. But that is the truth about unarmed ritual combat. And it's necessary. It is just as necessary in our society and human culture as it is and always has been and always will be for our animal counterparts. But Ramsey, I don't have to do Greco-Roman wrestling with my neighbor to establish mating rights like a lizard. No, you don't. But I tell you what, if you want to understand your full human potential, then you have to exercise your full human potential. And if you don't know how to live in your body and command this body and be the one in charge, of this body rather than the other way around, the gut animal instincts controlling you and pulling your strings, then you've kind of failed as a human being, to be honest. And few things teach that mastery over self better than unarmed ritual combat. There's a certain illusion there that the real enemy is the other guy across the ring or the cage or the mat from you, the guy trying to squash you, the guy trying to pin you, the guy trying to tap you out, the guy trying to knock you down. The reality is that guy is there to help you. That guy is the training tool to shape yourself. The real enemy is the guy in the mirror. Why do we look in a mirror? So we can see ourselves. Usually, we want to see our best self. We look in the mirror, we fix our hair. I fix my non-existent hair. Women put on their makeup. They try to look pretty. They try to, they make some changes. We usually make, try to make a change when we look in the mirror. We fix our posture, we fix our messy eyebrows. We don't like the way we look. So we start making some changes. That guy in the mirror is not who we want to be. It's a stark reflection of the light reflecting off of our skin, off of our face. We don't like that reality. We want something more divine than that gut animal reality facing us in the mirror. So we have two opponents in every fight. The obvious one, the guy trying to grind your face into the dirt, and the less obvious one, the animal inside of you. That you gotta tame first before you can truly succeed. And you can absolutely tame that. I mean, that's the whole point. It's the whole point, friends. What is mastery over self? It's you make the decision, you exercise your free will, 
as opposed to being one of those guys who convinces yourself you have none and nothing you decide makes any difference and as opposed to the other extreme, the magical thinkers that just uh, make this unfounded assumption that they can speak things into reality by simply wishing it were so. Both of those are lies. Might as well stick my puny hand into the ocean and try to push the waves back. That doesn't work, friends. No matter how much I would want it to, doesn't work. Never has, never will. Thanks for watching, now get out there and train.